One thing to consider the Katrina immediate response uh, across the region was the, the massive scope of the event. Uh, Katrina impacted both the Mississippi coast and the New Orleans area. And the destruction in terms of you know, trees and power lines down extended far inland. <clears throat> in Hattiesburg, in, in Mississippi was one community you know, very heavily hit. And all that takes in, has to be taken into account when you consider response because highways and railroads were blocked for miles <clears throat> attempting to try to get relief supplies into the affected Gulf Coast area. It was a very different hurricane to, for both federal and state officials to have to try to respond to it. It, pre, uh, it created a bunch of unique challenges. Government's bureaucratic rules for trying to respond to, challenge, uh, to, respond to disasters didn't work very well in, these, uh, in this relatively unique or different and fast-changing situation. It's not to say that the response couldn't have been better, but you know, I think you certainly need to, to keep in mind that this was a, a relatively unique uh, circumstance of the entire metropolitan area being flooded, the one area where floodwaters aren't going to recede quickly. Well, one of the, I think, very beneficial things we saw come out as a response of the, from Katrina was in the uh, 2006 FEMA reform bill that passed Congress. Uh, that mandated that FEMA was to liaison uh, with the voluntary organizations that are uh, active in disaster situations. And that was one area I think that uh, we saw in Katrina, there was a particularly little coordination between FEMA and the, the state officials and, and local officials and the voluntary sector, in, in the business sector for that matter. Um, and you know, now FEMA, all the FEMA regions have uh, liaisons to liaison with the, the voluntary organizations. They, the voluntary organizations have a great wealth of, of knowledge and experience of dealing with disasters. They have ties to groups in, in the community that have a lot of uh, real-time information about what the exact needs in those communities happen to be with a, a particular disaster. And, and so it, I think that's very encouraging. We, we saw that with uh, some of the research we did here at the Johnson Center in the aftermath of the Joplin tornado in 2011. FEMA was uh, working much more effectively, I think, with uh, the voluntary organizations uh, in, in that case. And another thing that's emerged since uh, Katrina has been the rise of the, what's known as peer-to-peer -peer assistance uh, through like Facebook or through uh, tweeting as individuals in an area that are affected by a disaster can create a, a Facebook group or uh, send out tweets uh, saying exactly what they need and, and you know, then allowing people who are outside of the area to respond to uh, and, and assist them in a very direct uh, manner. And it's a, you know, what, what can be called peer-to-peer -peer assistance because I could go on the internet and find somebody who needs something and I could send them something uh, or I could take a step to help them directly without intermediaries of either the or volunteer organizations or uh, government relief agencies in the mix. The fact of, of neighbors helping neighbors has, has ever uh, disappeared. It's one of the first things, and you know, people started doing natural hazards uh, research back in the 1940s and 50s. It was one of the first things they, they uh, were able to document was the fact that there is a lot of community level well, locally, peer-to-peer -peer assistance of neighbors helping neighbors, uh, church, churches helping each other. That's always been there. I think you certainly you took a back seat for many years to the idea that you, know, you have government relief agencies or maybe <clears throat> the Red Cross uh, you know, are more visible national or international uh, relief organizations. But there's always been a tremendous uh, local of, uh, assistance network or assistance networks that spring up afterwards. And I think what we're simply seeing is with technology, we're able to extend that uh, reach in many ways. I think one of the most costly things that we saw occur in the aftermath of Katrina was in the recovery process. And the recovery process was slowed because, because it became extremely politicized. And in some of the, the research that's been done by uh, the, uh, researchers at the Mercatus Center, George Mason, uh, looked at the politicization of this recovery process and how it ended up getting uh, dragged out over a, a very long period of time. In part because the recovery was so 
extensive. So much had to be done in, in New Orleans. Uh, but also because it started being used for other political purposes besides simply uh, recovery. And it's a uh, re drawn out recovery process. The politicization of it in New Orleans went through, I think, three different uh, major uh, recovery plans. Although FEMA, I think, made some good changes after Katrina to make sure they worked better with the uh, voluntary organizations and, and, and coordinate with businesses better, uh, the, the trend toward more planning of the recovery process uh, has continued, I think, unchecked. And, and I think that's going to lead to uh, greater problems with future disasters.